What if you took Attack on Titan, made the cities a bit more neon, switched Eren for a guy who is a little less of a genocidal maniac, made the Titans a little less flashy and more scaly, yet equally weird looking, and the Scout Corps had guns that shoot lasers? Well, you'd get Kaiju number 8, which just goes to show that there is no such thing as an original idea anymore. Admittedly, kaiju, those big, or in this case sometimes small, city-devouring monsters have been around a hell of a lot longer than Attack on Titan, but you can't deny the similarities. Hell, they have a cyberpunk Levi using two swords to chop up kaiju, and Vice Commander Hoshino even shares a striking resemblance to a certain aloof captain of the Scout Corps. But there is one key difference between the two, at least for me personally, you know, other than guns that shoot lasers! And that is that I like Kaiju number 8 a hell of a lot more than I do Attack on Titan. Is it objectively as good? Hell no, very few things in the world of anime can rival the quality of art, but I'd say it's more entertaining. And when you are consuming, well, entertainment, the key is in the name. And now, before I get lynched by Eren Simps, I should probably explain myself. First of all, this is not just Attack on Titan wearing a Kaiju jumpsuit. Okay, it, it kind of is, but that's not the point. Yes, there are big similarities, not least of which being, well, literally big, man-eating monsters threatening the peace and society in general, and there is a special group of soldiers whose job is to hunt said beasties. Except here the appearance of a kaiju leads to a little less screaming and being crushed by falling rubble, and little more complaining in the bus line to evacuation that you really, really need to pee, or using your iPad to see the kaiju get blasted by a gun that shoots lasers! on live television. Okay, I'll stop doing that now. It wasn't funny then, it's not funny now, I know, I know. What I'm trying to say is that the air is very different here. Kaiju aren't some world-ending disaster that the people cover in fear from whenever one is but mentioned in the annals of history. They are just an everyday fact of life. There's even a company that specializes in cleaning the kaiju remains off the street, because, you know, stink. But this more mundane approach gives a lot more opportunities to lighten the story a little. It's not just all doom and gloom and crushing children to death all day every day. Kaiju number 8 is full of dumb humor that prevents the theme from getting too dark. Not to a point where it would be a comedy show or anything, but it doesn't forego that all-important balance either. Plus, it helps that the jokes are, well, my kind of humor. That is to say, weird. But the main character peeing out of his nipples, yes, really, is just one part of Kaiju number 8. It's the comedic relief bit in what is still a fairly bleak world, but that also leads it to have a similar vibe to something like One Punch Man. It's really quite a horrific existence in a world full of eldritch horrors threatening to flatten entire cities on the weekly, and then you have the main character being sort of an overpowered idiot to lighten the load a little. Of course, it's not Saitama levels of I am God with one brain cell, but the effect is the same. And speaking of that not god who potentially might even have two brain cells. Meet Hibino Kafka, a man who is really, really good at chainsawing kaiju poo off the street, and as it so happens, our intrepid hero of the day. Unlike a certain angry child, a kaiju did not eat his mom, but rather his legally different Game Boy, and thus Kafka swore bloody vengeance upon the beings that had so wronged him. Together with his childhood friend and totally not love interest, he then joined the army to become the best and greatest kaiju killer of all time. Just kidding, he failed the selection process every year, and is now stuck chainsawing kaiju poo off the street. But in a stroke of luck that absolutely nobody could predict, the Japanese government realized in their infinite wisdom that 30 isn't actually all that old, and increased the age of which candidates could apply for the service all the way to 33. And you know where this is going, but I'm not going to say it since unnecessary spoilers are a thing we don't like here. Am I missing anything? Oh yeah, that. So yeah, in a reverse Eren move, Kafka eats a kaiju, or at least gets forcibly deep-throated by one, leading him to become this thing. 
Kaiju number 8, the greatest and most idiotic threat to society, which makes it potentially one of the dumbest choices in all of anime history, that he, despite being in possession of Japan's most wanted monster fursuit, still applies to join the Kaiju hunting force. But hey, maybe he's totally not love interest childhood friend turned superior officer, likes them a little on the scaly side. But what of the rest of the cast then? You have the totally not love interest childhood friend Mikasa Ervin, the other Mikasa who thought that playing Marauder means DPS, Armin who can actually fight, a a more mentally stable Reiner and rich boy Berthold, and this guy since every shonen needs that one loudmouth character apparently. They aren't exactly the most riveting cast of characters, but at least they do the job well enough, and their group dynamic is fun, even if the design leaves some room for improvements. Then again, standardized uniforms do be like that sometimes, unless you're Golden Kamui who actually got the memo on personalized uniforms. I do have one major complaint about Kaiju number 8 though, and it's not strictly speaking about the anime, it's more the connotation of having Kaiju in the name. And to that end, let us do a thought exercise in word association. What is the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word Kaiju? If you said giant monster destroying cities, ergo Godzilla, you'd be correct. So why is most of the anime about relatively small monsters that predominantly don't destroy cities then? And to answer my own question, it's because smaller individual fights allow for far more character moments that can then raise up them as the hero of the story, but still, it's not exactly what I'd call traditional kaiju action. And now, before this video too becomes too doom and gloom, a few words about the production. And well, it's really good. Production IG is a well-known studio that is pretty much synonymous with quality at this stage, and it really shows. The OST hits hard and fits the action, but then again that might be because a lot of the songs do lean a little more onto the rock and metal side of things, which happens to be my preferred type of music, and the visuals are just top notch. They are also very IG. Realistic, almost nitty cityscapes with muted colors that invoke a certain kind of feeling, paired with dynamic action and great camera angles to further emphasize what is going on, and then the palette melts back to bright and warm hues when the world is at peace and the characters are just chilling. It's very clever use of color, while not being quite as extreme as something like Apothecary Diaries. You could say that Kaiju Number 8 is like a mixture of the sport action the studio is known for, paired with Ghost in the Shell and Heavenly Delusion Cities, both standing and destroyed, with some eldritch beasties in there as well. And as far as the dub is concerned, not bad. One thing to keep in mind though if you do watch it in English is that it is very American cartoons kind of dub. Other than that, the usual caveats apply, mainly some scenes lack feeling behind the voices, and especially the very obvious fake laughing can get quite jarring. But A for effort, that and the dub isn't actually lacking behind all that much, a few days max depending on where you're watching it, which is nice. That being said though, some characters do sound a lot more natural in the Japanese original. Mainly, Kikoru doesn't sound like a 14 year old trying to do a cute anime voice, and Vice Commander Hoshino's Japanese works far better on the execution of his two sides, from the laugh it off to the kaiju blender mode. All in all, it's a good series that is fairly easy to get into, even if the first episode's giant monster can be a little misleading for what it'll eventually come to be, and the similarities with Attack on Titan can either help or hinder your viewing experience. But if you're looking for some pretty action with dumb comedy and good music, then give it a watch. It's not exactly too hard to get into, and an episode or two later you should be able to tell if it's a show for you, but I for one recommend it. And with that, thank you for watching, I do hope you enjoyed that, if you did, do all of the YouTube things of likes and comments and subscribes. This is also where I would give shoutouts to my channel members if I had any, so if you do want to support the channel that way and would like to become a channel member and get your name here, that's how you do it. I'm also going to make the Patreon soon, I'm just considering what would be the fair price to upload stuff there. It's going to be the exact same content here on YouTube except ad-free, so if you would want to see that in the future, the Patreon is hopefully here in well, knowing my schedule month or two, but do let me know what you would consider a fair price for that. I was thinking along the lines of one or two euros, something easily accessible. Anyway, with this, I have been Cheese, and I'll see you next time with more anime goodness. Tata for now.